Scott. It's a Scott. Scott Sands. Scott Sands Show. Twitter, Insta, Facebook. You can find me everywhere at Scott Sands, which actually is kind of ironic considering our next topic. Great to have you along. Thank you so much for listening. We're everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. These statistics are, are kind of weird, and, and it actually comes from an, an actual presentation used by Facebook that has been researching this subject for three years. They've been conducting studies into how the photo sharing app Instagram, which Facebook owns, affects millions of its younger users. And repeatedly, they have found that Instagram is harmful for a sizable majority of them, most notably teenage girls. And in an actual slide from Facebook, Instagram in 2019, they say, we make body image issues worse for one in three girls. Teens blame Instagram for increases in the rate of anxiety and depression. And another slide actually used by Facebook said, this reaction was unprompted and consistent across all groups. That's actually somewhat alarming. If you've got kids, if you've got grandkids, you should pay attention to this. Former Miss America, Mallory Hagan, is joining us on Zoom. You'll be able to watch the video online a little bit later. Mallory Hagan is joining us now. She is also a part of this body positivity movement, SANE's Solution, uh, and uh, with the Miss America organization, uh, producer of the documentary Better to help redefine wellness. Mallory, it's so great to have you on. The, the ironic thing is, we're about to talk about body positivity, and the only thing I could think of was, crap, I'm about to do a Zoom with a Miss America. How do I look? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of was kind of worth well crap I should I picked the wrong day to wear what I'm wearing today you look wonderful thank you thank you for having me and for facilitating this conversation that's very important you know I, I I think back to to my teenage years and I can't imagine how different life would have been if we had all of these social media platforms I, I would like to think that there are things that would have been better a lot of memories that we would have been able to capture on on an iPhone 30, 35 years ago, but also a lot of things that, that may have affected who my friends were and, and how I, I'm obviously a fat kid and I've obviously been a fat kid my entire life. I, but I've got to, at this point, and I just don't care. I, so I'm not sure if having all of those pictures and Instagram around when I was in school would have changed the way I, I consider myself or the way I thought about, about myself then, you know? Sure. I think many of us who are millennials, I'm 32, we're, we, you know, we're the generation that lived before social media and this level of connectivity, and also now we're living in it. And I think what's really important for parents and grandparents to remember is the feelings that you felt, take yourself back to middle school, before social media even existed, how self-conscious we were and aware of the smallest, littlest things when we were in school and how that uh, played into what we were like socially and now amplify that by you know a hundred or, or more than that kids today are school doesn't you know they don't leave school when they step out of the doors school is online it's on instagram it's on facebook and these platforms while in some ways very beneficial you know they allow us access to information that we may have never had before. They, we've allowed this next generation to be one of the most um, educated and aware generations that we've had, but we're also seeing the ramifications of the visual element of places like Instagram and the dopamine and serotonin released when things like likes and comments happen, that level of validation that is addictive. Um, and then not to mention, what we're also seeing is, of course, that apps like Facetune are the number one downloaded app in the world, which means that it is regular for people to alter their appearance before they place their appearance on their already a highlight reel, right? Right. I, it's, I, I mean, there are pictures of people that I see on social media that I'm not sure I would recognize if I ran into them in real life because I've only seen them through filtered photographs on social media. Right. And imagine when you're 12, 13, 14, um, how that impact impacts the way you view yourself and the things that you think are necessary in order to be socially acceptable to the general public. And that's that's really detrimental to a young person's psyche. I mean, we, we do that to ourselves and we're in our 30s, right? Imagine if you were 12 or 13 going through that process at that age. First of all, Mallory, I, I love you if you think I'm also in the in, in, in the 30s. 
Uh, <laughs> I did. I did. I thought that. Right. You're now, you now may be my favorite guest of all time. Yes. Love that. <laughs> but it, it's, I, I find it ironic and interesting that you, you talk about the dopamine releases that getting those likes brings you. I mean, I've got to do it as part of my job. Social media is part of what I do for a living. I've got to generate viral content and, and get listeners and, and increase ratings and get people to our, our Facebook and Instagram pages. But otherwise, I, I could really care less. Uh, and I've been addicted to drugs before. I know what you're talking about when you start to have those those cravings. And, and that's what kids are craving now. And, and if they, I mean, there was a time where Instagram was going to take out the number of likes that, that photographs received because of that very reason. But they realized all of a sudden that it didn't make their site as sticky and they weren't able to make as much money. They, they, they would rather have that revenue than to do the right thing for mental health. Yeah, those vanity metrics won't be there if you take away likes and and um, quant being able to quantify a photo or whatever it might be. So um, that part is is really sticky. But that's why it's really important for young people to have role models that I think are positive and understand. And that's where the Miss America organization comes in in this conversation. As many people may not know, the Miss America organization took away the swimsuit competition, stopped judging on outward appearance a couple of years ago, and we've seen a real difference in our candidates and their level of um, comfortability and who they are and what they stand for because we're focused on performance, not appearance. And so we have 12,000 young women across the country each year who are participating in our program who are out and about in their communities being great role models. Um, and, you know, the original influencers, Miss America candidates were doing that before, well, long before Instagram or Facebook or any one of those platforms was here. And so now we're hoping to take the information that we learn through Better Movie, which is just all about gut health, brain health, um, feeding yourself sane foods, uh, nutritious foods, and how all those things work together to make you perform to the best of your ability as a whole human, not just aesthetically. And so I think when we talk about uh, young people and who they should be looking up to, a lot of who they're looking up to is on Instagram. They're people that are aesthetically it's like the women in Miss America who are focused on holistic health. I think that's what's really important. As you talk about Miss America candidates changing a little bit, uh, they're still all of, uh, out of my league. So, I, I mean, it's not it's not changing that much, but I, I, I get your point. Well, they but, are out of your league because they're so much younger than you. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> our, our, age, our age cutoff is, is what puts them out of your league, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Theoretically, Mallory Hagan is here on the Scott Sancho. Mallory, last week was National Suicide Prevention Week. Uh, and we're seeing, uh, and we've been tracking this uptick in suicides because of, uh, although I, I mean, I think it's a hard link to tie directly to social media, but I, I certainly think that that mental health has been affected directly by social media. And, and there's really, I, what can parents look for if anything, to know whether or not their kids have been adversely affected by some of these influences and, and, and even what other kids in school may be directly saying and bullying them on. So, I mean, obviously cyberbullying is a whole other problem, but a lot of that stems out of the body positivity issue on social media. Sure. Well, I think, as you mentioned, we might not be able to tie it directly back to solely social media, but we are going on almost two years of a global pandemic. That in and of itself, from a mental health perspective, has been very difficult on everyone, but especially young people. Um, because of a global pandemic, kids are home more often than they normally would be, which means that we're seeing a spike in child abuse um, allegations or um, children who are experiencing adverse childhood uh, trauma. And so it's, it's the compounded effect of all of these things together. And so I would say for parents, one of the major things you can do is limit screen time. Just limiting screen time means that you're taking away the option for that release of dopamine or serotonin from things like social media, but also just looking for a change of behavior, period. You know, teenagers and young people are often moody as is, but as parents, usually you know the difference between uh, something that is that is really a shift in behavior um, and something that's not. So I would be really attuned to your child and um, whether or not they're they're 
displaying signs of that sort of shift and, and really talking to them. We, we connect online, but we so often forget that connecting in person is really what's necessary in order for us to thrive as, as human beings. So I really encourage people to, you know, one or two nights a week, if you're not table sitters for dinner, make an effort to do that. It's things like that that I think are really important. And I think kids are, are losing a lot of social skills. We had to talk to everybody every day. We had to, if I wanted to get rejected asking a girl to prom, I had to pick up the phone and get rejected over the phone, not over a text message, not over a Facebook message. I think kids are losing that that social interaction and, and need to be able to communicate interpersonally on a, on a much higher level than they're able to do today. I agree. I agree with that. Should, should kids have, a, should there be a cutoff level? Should Facebook and Instagram and, and Snapchat and TikTok have, have uh, higher age limits to allow people uh, to use that app? I would like to see different content filters that are specific to age groups. I think as we all know, we're, we're really far down the line now. You know, kids have phones as young as seven, eight years old. So this is gonna be a combined effort of these companies and also parents. Um, but I, I would like to see filters that are created by the company, not, not put on the parents, but filters that are created by the companies to make sure that only certain levels of content are accessible to certain age groups. Well, here's the, the, the more alarming story. I don't know if you saw this in the Wall Street Journal just one or two days ago, TikTok. Uh, God, I hate that app. Uh, yes, I'm on TikTok. I, I hate that app. Uh, is actually targeting sexually oriented content to young people. Did, I, I don't, did you notice that story? Uh, I, I TikTok. Don't see that story. No. So they're, they're actually using their algorithm to send sexually suggestive and explicit material to their youngest users for whatever reason, uh, linking to pornography sites and more. I mean, there, there, there are sites that are actively taking advantage of the kids and sending content to them that way. Yeah, I, I'm not an expert TikTok user, but one thing I do know is that it requires, it's a very low barrier of entry to open up TikTok and to witness the, the videos. You can open it up just on a browser. And so it doesn't really require any type of profile information or background information. So it'd be hard for me to comment to know exactly how that could be happening yeah. because so many users are, are not having to input that type of information. But that's just another reason for them to create that barrier of entry so that they do have uh, good data on who's using the app and what they're targeting to them. Mallory Hagen, former Miss America, Miss America 2013, SaneSolution.com. Tell us quickly about Sane Solution. Sure. So Miss America and myself partnered with Sane Solution, Jonathan Baylor, to create an educational curriculum for the candidates across the country so that they may understand their wellness from the holistic perspective. And so Sane Solution does offer supplements, but I really encourage people to watch Better Movie because that's where the knowledge is. And that's what we want people to understand is how to live better, how to, how to focus on their performance versus their appearance. And that's something that I've been striving to do for the last couple of years post Miss America. And I really want other people to have that understanding as well. So bettermovie.com is where I encourage people to go and learn. As you look at me on Zoom, uh, that's pretty much my homework assignment for the night, isn't it? To watch that. <laughs> well, it's good. You'll learn a lot. You'll 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 be happy you watched. Mallory, how can everybody find you on? Are you on social media? Should we be following you for for a good example of what to see and post online? I am. My, my thing about social media is I show the good and the bad, all all the ways in between. So I think that's important. But you can find me everywhere at it's Mallory Hagen. It's MalloryHagen.com and on all social platforms too. Mallory, terrific. I, I enjoy the segment a lot. And thank you for, for your input and your influence over our young people. Hopefully it'll do some good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one. We'll have this.